Good day, I am Ignacio Gullo. I am going to talk about Santiago's way through Vigo. First, I speak about the way and Vigo. Second, I propose the way to do on foot. Third, I propose the way to do on bicycle. And fourth, I show the common segment at the end. Santiago de Compostela is one of the three main centers of pilgrimage of the Christianity, together with Jerusalem and Rome. The pilgrimage to Santiago is the one most characterized by doing it with one's strength. The experience of making St. James Way goes beyond religion. Every pilgrim has its own motives. Since the 9th century after Christ, pilgrims follow not a single one, but many ways to arrive in Santiago. We Galicians are friendly people, and to have people coming from far away to know our land seems right to us. With the passage of time, the appearance of highways forces pilgrims to change their route to avoid them and makes necessary for the way to have its own signaling. It's the pilgrims who make the way. Public administrations take care of choosing and signaling the routes but only after there are pilgrims following them. Although through its 12 centuries of history, the pilgrimage to Santiago suffers from several crises in which it almost disappears, at present it experiences its best era, with more pilgrims than ever coming through more different routes. I am a witness. What I didn't see for 50 years, I see now pilgrims traversing my city every day. And how is my city? Vigo is a port city placed at the foot of mountains, which make it to have many slopes. We Vigoans are the most hospitable people that there are. To offer our hospitality, we fight if need be. That's the reason why our city receives the title of always beneficial. Pilgrims create their own route to traverse Vigo. I see them climbing up to my quarter, Koya. Could it be that there is something in Koya that is worth seeing? If you have an interest in finding out, don't miss my video dedicated to Koya. Some pilgrims even pass by my street. The idea of my street being worth to pass by is something that never occurs to me. Anyway, we have overly wide sidewalks. I see many pilgrims descending Núñez de Balboa Street, which is not a good choice because of its incomplete sidewalk. Apparently, besides their sense of direction, pilgrims use navigators too. But it is not a good route. It doesn't make sense to climb the slope up to Coya just to descend to the sea again. The regional government of Galicia, the Sunta, diffuses and signals Santiago's way. It diffuses the way with leaflets, like this, that describe the Portuguese way from Lisbon. And this, from the year 2018, is the first to include the variant of the Portuguese way along the coast, from Porto to Redondela which is the way that traverses Vigo. The Xunta signals the way with landmarks up to the entrance of the city and after the exit, but not throughout it. The only four landmarks that are found in the city are this one at the port and these other three at Areal Street. The regional government publishes in the year 2022 a map proposing a route to traverse Vigo, route that curiously does not pass along this landmark place at the port by them. Poor little girl, they left you. But do not fret, for I do want you. Later I'm proposing a route passing along you, so you're never alone. The route proposed by the regional government isn't still signaled, but shops and bars in Vigo compensate by placing signals on the windows. I have the occasion to learn this route 
on June 2024 when the regional government organizes a hike to make this route known and gives away this cap and this t-shirt to the participants. What I have to say about this is thank you country people, but this route is not the solution for it is not better than the routes that the pilgrims are already following. The segment from America Square to Alfonso the Twelfth Promenade is particularly bad and the alleged historical reasons are not enough to justify it. For cyclists it is unviable. The obvious route would be to follow the bike lane along Avenue of Camellias and descend from Mill and Falperra streets. Instead, first it takes a street to Tomas Alonso counter direction, second takes Child Street counter direction, and third it takes Promil's Crossing, which is a long flight of stairs. For walkers, it is uncomfortable. The obvious route to make this segment would be to follow the slopeless streets of Lopez Mora and P. Margal. Instead, it, it climbs and descends slopes, which for the least athletic walkers, it is an unnecessary nuisance. Passes through this Camino da Seara, which has an incomplete sidewalk and passes not by the hostel for pilgrims. In August of 2024, the Town Council of Vigo announces for the future the signaling of the way through Vigo. It is for these reasons that I decide to publish this video to advise pilgrims. The roads news are not the best ones and are not signaled yet. What we need are routes for walkers and cyclists that pass by the hostel for pilgrims and also reduce to the minimum the amount of slopes, of traffic lights and of segments shared with motor vehicles. Besides, those pilgrims wishing to obtain the certificate called the Compostela need this pilgrim credential to carry along the way and stamp a couple of times per day. This credential can be acquired for a price than one euro and a half at the tourism offices from the regional government. In Vigo, it can also be acquired at the Association of Friends of the Pasos, placed at Uruguay Street, number 17, Entresol. To obtain the Compostela, it is required to follow the way along a minimum distance, which is 100 kilometers on foot and 200 kilometers on bicycle. The distance from Vigo is 103 kilometers. Therefore, it is possible for pilgrims on foot to obtain the Compostela by starting at Vigo and stamping the credential in any of the stamping points of the city. And where to stamp the credential? In hostels and tourism offices, in all of them. In pharmacies and service stations, in nearly all of them. In churches, almost none. The usual is to find the churches closed or open but without the stamp or a staff whom to ask for it. Only a few churches offer the stamp. Besides, in Vigo, from the premises that saw the sign of St. James' cell, the usual is for bars and coffee shops to stamp the credentials and shops not to. And where not to stamp the credential? Well, at the police station of Vigo. They stamped the credential there during the pandemic, but they no longer do. The Portuguese way by the seaside comes from Bayona. This is the last signal before entering Vigo, placed in the road PO324 and points to the fourth bridge over the Lagares River, counting from the sea. And this is the first sign after leaving Vigo place in the road PO552 next to the fire station. So I just have to guide you from that landmark up to the sign 
is, isn't it? Actually, no. It is more complicated. Why? Because you Permians make it more complicated. Here we see the sea, the mouth of the Lagares River, and the first bridge coming up its course. Here I see you entering Vigo. I also see you following the seaside path from Alcabre to Bozas. You are following on the shore by all means. But I am not intent on convincing you to change. On the contrary, it's you who convinces me. Following the coast has its advantages. First, you don't get lost. Two, no slopes. Three, cooler temperatures. Fourth, because of no streets running into the sea, walkers following the shore have no crossings to traverse, no traffic lights to wait at, only have to avoid entering the large port zones of Vigo. So I'm taking you into consideration too, before recommending my routes. Instead of a single starting point, we'll have two, the first and the fourth bridge over the Lagares River. This is the map of Vigo. The two arrows on the left represent the entrance to Vigo through the first and fourth bridges over the Lagares River, separated by 750 meters. The arrow on the right represents the exit from Vigo. Vigo has roads reserved to walkers and cyclists, which would be the ideal way to traverse the city. This is the blue path that follows the course of the Lagares River along 8 kilometers from its mouth. The start of the path is next to the first bridge over the Lagares River, so all of you pilgrims pass by it. If you want to learn more about this path, don't miss my two videos about following its course along the upper and lower course. In the map, we are presenting this route as blue. This is the Greenway built over the course of the old railway. If you are interested in knowing it, don't miss my video dedicated to follow its course. In the map, we represent this in green color. If the blue path and the greenway were connected, we would already have a way to pass across Vigo, but they are not, so we must find another way. It's time to recommend the two routes to traverse Vigo, one for walkers and one for cyclists. I follow the route on foot and I follow the route on bicycle. Easy, isn't it? Part 2. Optimal route on foot. Route by the shore passing by the public hostel in Vigo. This is the route that I recommend to walkers and to cyclists that are going to spend the night at Vigo. It starts at the Lagares River and follows the shore. It is not the shortest route, it measures 750 meters more and another 750 meters if you start at the fourth bridge because of having to descend down to the first one. But yes, I still recommend it because of having no slopes and walkers have just to pass a single traffic light before reaching the hostel. Two good reasons. Pilgrims following the landmarks arrive to this place, the fourth bridge over the Lagares River. In that case, we have to descend the course of the river down to the first bridge. But instead of crossing this bridge, we'll follow the blue path along this bank of the river and cross through the second bridge, which is pedestrian. This is the start of the blue path next to the first bridge over the Lagares River. Here comes the pilgrims that follow the shore. Now that we are all together here, we are continuing by following the avenue of Samir. Cyclists must follow the avenue. Walkers can follow the sidewalk of the avenue, but what I recommend instead is to follow 
the promenade next to the beach. Only walkers. At the end of the promenade, we take the path and afterwards we go back to the avenue. Just after the sea museum, we find this road that descends down to Alcabra Beach and we take it, but just before the beach, we turn back to take the seaside path. The path leads us below this gate and we come out to this road. We turn left. We could get back to the shore, but then we wouldn't be able to continue because of the rocks. So instead we turn here and take this road which comes out to the shore later. We arrive in both of us. Here we leave behind the shore in order not to enter the extensive port zone of both us. Rather, we approach this avenue, walkers cross to the other side and follow the sidewalk which follows the sea. And this is the only traffic light before the hostel and cyclists follow the avenue. We arrive to the entrance of the port zone of El Berbez and we avoid getting into it. Those willing to continue the way towards Redondela should follow by the shore, but those wanting to spend the night at Vigo should cross to the other side of the avenue because we are arriving to the hostel. This is a cruzeiro, a stone cross as is usual to find in Galicia next to churches and crossways. And behind there is the public hostel in Vigo. Here they stamp the credential. After the hostel we continue. Cyclists go through the avenue and walkers go through the walkway in the opposite side next to the sea. In the opposite side, we see the tourist office from the regional government, where they stamp the credential and also sell credentials. And here we find this bike lane limited to 10 kilometers per hour, which we are going to follow, cyclists on it, and walkers outside it. We see that it leads us to our old friend, the abandoned landmark in the port. Here you are, old friend. See how I came back? I made my promise good. The bike lane ends here in the Estrella Square. What we do now is to go across the square and go out to Areal Street, which we are going to follow. We left Estrella Square and are now at Areal Street, which we are going to follow for now on, on this side. But we are making an exception. There's no way to pass the next round point, except by crossing to the other side, then crossing back to this one. We pass the round point and continue through Areal Street. This part of the route matches the one proposed by the regional government, and here, at Arenal Street, we find the three landmarks. When we arrive to the end of Areal Street, we take Isaac Peral Street up, up to the round point, then turn left. We are at Garcia Barbón Street. At this round point, Garcia Barbón Street ends, and San Junto Badia Street begins with this pharmacy where they will stamp your credential. At this point, the route gets away from the shore and does not get close to it again. Followers of the coast, by all means, we have to go. If you insist on going around the port through this street, 
eventually get to the tennis sports world and from there you will be able to find paths and roads up to Chapella Port but from there you won't be able to continue between Chapella and Redondela the mounds are very close to the sea leaving almost no space the only road going through there is the National Road PO552 which is a road with heavy traffic from that road three other roads descend down to the sea but they are not connected between them you will be left with no choice but to walk on the shoulder of the National Road and I'm telling you you don't want to walk on the shoulder of a road with heavy traffic and for Chapella it will be hard to reconnect to the signal route because it passes away from the shore so followers of the coast by all means we have to say goodbye to the shore and take this street up we are at the end of San Jorge Badia Street. The route proposed by the regional government continues straight through Avenue of Galicia and then between numbers 138 and 140 turns into a narrow alley leading down below a bridge over the old railway and another bridge over the highway up to reach the fire station I don't recommend that route because of not having sidewalks and because of having steep slopes instead I take Buenos Aires Street that has sidewalks has a softer slope and passes over both the old railway and the highway. At this point of Buenos Aires Street, the optimal route on foot joins the optimal route on bicycle, which comes through this way. We are all together now. It only remains the last common segment. Part 3 Optimal Route on Bicycle Route through the blue path and the cycle lane that doesn't pass by the public hostel in Vigo. This is the route that I recommend to cyclists that are not going to spend the night at Vigo. Of course, walkers can follow this route too. Vigo, city of slopes, hardly propitious for cyclists, has a single bicycle lane that traverses the whole city from the avenue of Castellao to Buenos Aires Street. A speed is limited to 30 km per hour. There are other bike lanes, but those are toy bike lanes with a speed limited to 10 km per hour. We follow the blue path up to the Balaidos Stadium and after that we follow Fragoso Avenue up to America Square from where we follow the bike lane up to the square of Isabel the Catholic and from there we descend down to the train station and there we take the Greenway. Here we see the first bridge over the Lagares River. Here come the pilgrims, they follow the shore. And here we see the start of the blue path that follows the course of the Lagares River. This is the route we are going to take. Upon arriving to the second bridge over the river, we cross it and continue on the other side. We arrive to the fourth bridge over the Lagares River. This way come the pilgrims that follow the landmarks. Now that we are all together, we'll continue the blue path. But rather than crossing the fourth bridge, we'll continue on this bank up to the fifth bridge, which is pedestrian, and cross there. We have arrived to Balaidos Stadium. Here we'll leave the blue path, we'll go around the stadium, then take Fragoso Avenue up to America Square, where we'll take the 
bike lane. Just before getting to America Square, you have to take a detour because the last segment is reserved for buses, taxis and motorbikes and we cyclists are none of that. Across Independence Square, the bike lane is signaled using these little signs on the floor. By following the bike lane, we arrive to a square of Isabel the Catholic. And from here, to arrive to our destination is very easy. We only have to continue to follow the bike lane up to the end of Pizarro Street, then through Travesía de Vigo. And at the end of Travesía de Vigo, continue straight by Street Angel de Leme Marina and we'll reach our destination. It's only 3 kilometers, 300 meters, but there are 24 traffic lights and the bike lane disappears for one kilometer and a half of Travesía de Vigo, then it appears again. So, rather than doing it, I recommend you to come here and descend down to that square, Fernando the Catholic Square, and continue to descend through Gregorio Fernandez Street down to the shopping mall Vialia, where we will take the greenway that will take us to our destination. It's the same distance, 3 kilometers, 300 meters, but there are only five traffic lights, three before the Greenway and two after it. To descend to this square, we can take Brazil and Santo Domingo streets or we can take this elevator. Once at the Fernando de Catholic Square, we descend by Gregorio Fernandez Street and go across Via Norte to reach this mini bike lane that leads us in the direction of the Greenway. Now we are at the true start of the Greenway. It's easy to continue. We'll pass below a bridge and when we'll be about to pass below a second bridge, we'll take the exit that will lead us to up the bridge. We left the Greenway and are now at Buenos Aires Street, just at the end of the bike lane. From this point on, about the final common segment, the guy with the cap will be in charge. I am in charge of the final common segment. This point, where both roads join, happens to be almost exactly 100 kilometers away from Santiago. Whoever wants to obtain the Compostela certificate by going on foot needs to have his or her credential stamped at least once before getting here. Please observe on the other side of the road a narrow road, the Sunkal road, that takes almost exactly to the fire station. But we are not taking that road. It is narrow, without sidewalk, and with a steep slope. Rather, we are going to the end of Buenos Aires Street and at the final round point, turn left. And finally, we arrive to the first sign after Vigo, this sign indicating a turn right. My job of guiding you through Vigo is now finished. Are you ready to continue the way? No, you are not. How so? Because the route to Redondela is badly indicated twice. First error. This sign is wrong. It indicates to turn right at the very first way, which is Burakinia's way, that will lead you in the opposite way. Rather, you have to take the second right 25 meters ahead, which is Paradella Street, that will take you in the right direction. A few meters 
after you will find another sign confirming that the way is correct. Second error. The regional government chooses a way that coincides partly with an older way called the route of the water, signaled using waves rather than St. James cells. The regional government decides to save their signs and thus count on the pilgrims following the waves, in spite of not warning them in the leaflet. In particular, there is a junction in which the waves signal left. If you ignore them and continue ahead, you, rather than to Redondela, arrive to the peak of the Mount of Amadroa. So you are warned, if you want to arrive to Redondela, you need to follow the waves as well as the St. James cells signs. At the end of the road of the water, the signals with St. James cells continue. Are you ready to continue? Yes, now you are. Good way, always join Santiago.